What's up guys, Capitan Clint here, and this is Basic Controls for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. The first thing we'll talk about is cameras, that's your views, being able to look left, right, at the panels, getting outside of the airplane so that you can view it from the outside is very helpful, especially if you're new, being inside the cockpit, uh, all those camera views we'll talk about. The next is the throttle, that's like the gas pedal in a car, makes you go faster, it's the power in an aircraft, we call it the throttle. Next is the brakes, there's a few different brakes like uh, I was talking about before. Parking brakes are set, um, and if you hit that full power, it, you're just going to stay right there on the runway. you got to know the button to take off parking brake. And then you also need to know the button for braking so when you come into land, you don't overrun the runway. Next is yaw. This one actually confuses a lot of people who aren't in aviation. It's the left and right movement of the airplane. Usually when you're in the air, you turn like this, but on the ground you have to turn like this, which is uh, moving the rudder in the very back. And you do that with your foot pedals. So that's yaw. We'll talk about that. Next is flaps. Flaps uh, slow you down, but it also gives you more lift, so you float better. And you use this on takeoff so you get off the runway faster, and you use it on landing so that you're floating, you slow down, and you land nice and soft. Next is the yoke or the stick, and like I mentioned before, it's how you steer the airplane. You're going to be going like this with the ailerons and this with the elevator. Landing gear, this is something that is only on certain aircraft like the big ones. Uh, Every aircraft has landing gear, but some have retractable landing gear, so they'll come up into the airplane. Uh, knowing that button will help you so that when you're flying around, you when you bring in the landing gear, you fly faster. When you bring it down, it actually slows you down and prepares you for landing. Finally, trim. This is another one that can really make somebody's life easier. When you're flying along, sometimes you have to use the stick to really stay flat and level. Um, if you use the trim, eventually you're going to be able to let go of the stick and the airplane will still fly straight. So no hands. Before I get too far, I do want to say you can use a keyboard and mouse, but I do not suggest it. Try to find a gaming controller of some sort that is compatible with your computer. That will make your life way easier. If you do have a stick or a yoke, fantastic. It's going to work phenomenally for you. All right, here we are in the Cessna Citation on the runway. First thing I'm gonna show you is how to look up buttons. Now, let's say you remember throttle is important, but you can't remember what button it was associated with. Click the escape button. You'll come to this page, come to controls, and this is where you can find every control that you need. So first you wanna be in the right input. So let's say we're looking it up on the keyboard. You come down here to search by name and throttle. Did I spell that right or is it just being slow? There we go. Okay, so throttle. Everything that is assigned to the keyboard that has throttle in it. Auto arm. Then we have throttle cut, but what we're going to worry about is decrease and increase throttle. Now you can also have it to all, and it will show you a lot of different things. So you can set specific engines like full throttle for engine 4 or throttle to 20%, but that's way too far in the, the weeds. Don't do that. I suggest coming to essentials. Everything that I'm going to teach you is in essentials. So throttle, F2 and F3, that's all you have to worry about. Increase throttle, you hold down F3. Decrease throttle, you hold down F2. Now let's say you're playing with a controller. Well, come up to the inputs, and here we are with a controller. And once again, throttle. I don't know why it's not popping up. There we go. And we are in essentials, so decrease and increase throttle. A is to increase throttle, B is to decrease throttle. That's how you look things up. Uh, there are some other things that you can do in here, but I'm not going to get into it. Look for my video where we deep dive into the controls, how to set new controls and things of that sort. Right now, all I want you to know is how to look up buttons. 
All right, before I move on, I did want to talk about one other thing. I'm going to be going over the controller and the mouse and keyboard inputs. If you do have something special like a stick, like this Thrustmaster, you can set buttons the same way. You can see everything is labeled. Uh, if you wanted to set something, for instance, like throttle, you could click here and search by input. And I'm just going to click a button that I want to be associated. It's going to be the button 11. And it's currently on something else, but I'm going to validate it anyways. As you can see here, joystick button 11 is now the throttle. And that's how you go about setting it if you have uh, something other than the controller or the mouse. Uh, you can also still search by the input as well if you don't know what it's assigned to. Uh, make sure that you don't have two things that are assigned to the same. So I do have this. If I set this as the throttle, then I came over here and set this as the throttle, then it's going to get really confusing because I tap any one of those, just barely touch it, and it's going to change. So you only want one thing associated with each control. So one throttle only. So now we're going to talk about views. Uh, first we're going to start with keyboard and mouse. So to look around you use the mouse, you right click and move right, left, down. You can literally look anywhere you want, but you have to hold down that uh, right click button. Another thing that you can do, you can do the up arrow, down arrow, and it side to side, left and right arrow, and it moves you like that. Uh, if you do want to do a quick look one way or the other, that's going to be control and then the arrow button. So control left, make you look left. Control right, make you look uh, right. Control up, make you look up. And control down will make you look back. So those are the basic views while you're flying inside the cockpit with keyboard and mouse. To get outside of the cockpit, you're going to push the end button. And this gets you outside. So once again, you can do the same thing. You've got your mouse here, right click, and you can move side to side. It is inverted, a little bit confusing, uh, in my opinion at least. But that's something that you can go into the controls panel and invert as well. Okay, uh, the other views that you have on the keyboard, you can once again click control, and if you click down, you look behind you. If you do control up, it looks directly down. If you can do control left, looking right, that's interesting, control right, and you'll look left. So it is inverted. You can uh, go into the control panel and invert it so that it feels a little bit n more natural for you. But those are the basic views that you have with keyboard and mouse. Now let's go ahead and talk about it with the controller. For the controller, their views are all controlled with the D-pad. So when we're outside, if we push up, looks down, push down, looks behind you, push left, looks left, push right, it looks right. Very, very easy. And then it's going to be, I believe it's the menu button, it's the button with the two boxes. Click that one and it will bring you back inside the cockpit. Now, I love the controller when it comes to views. Uh, it makes it very, very easy. You can click the up and it gets closer and eventually it ends on this very close. And then you can click down and it goes back and that kind of looks at the instrument panel a bit and then it goes all the way to the instrument panel. Now when you're up here left and right we'll look outside depending on where you're at it'll be slightly different but if you're down here all the way to the instrument panel it's going to go through every single instrument that you might need to use so I'm gonna hit the right button and it's going to show us all these up here. Hit right again, show us this, right again, right again. As you can see, it's just taking us through all the controls that we might need. And eventually you get back to the same one. Now let's say you're kind of moving through and then you have to look up real quick. Hit the up button and it'll bring you back. Hit the down button and you're going to have to go all the way back through and find it. 
So the D-pad makes it very, very easy. And then the menu button or the two squares, I don't know what that is necessarily called, gets you external and internal. And those are the views. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the throttle. And the throttle is what makes the airplane go faster or slower. It's the more or less the gas pedal for the aircraft. So here I have the keyboard section pulled up and I've typed in throttle or began to essentials and we see that decreased throttle is F2, increased throttle is F3. For the controller, we can click over here and we will go back to throttle and decreasing throttle is B, increasing throttle is A. So let's go ahead and go back out and test this out. The parking brake is on, so this aircraft isn't going to go anywhere. I'm just going to go ahead and look down at the throttle. Here it is right here. And as you can see, there are two. Uh, when you have increase and decrease, it's going to do both at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and click F3. As you can see, it moved slightly. If I hold it down, it starts moving a lot more. And I hold it down F2 and it comes back. Now I've got my controller here and I'm going to click A, it's going forward, B, it's going back. And as you can see, it's not like a uh, gas pedal in a car. You set it and forget it and it stays there. So that's a, at a certain percent. We can go all the way to 100% and there we are going that way bring it back let's say that's about 50 percent and so on so when you fly you don't necessarily always stay 100 percent the entire time uh, but that's the throttle a and b and f2 and f3 if you have other systems then just go into the control panel like we did and look up increase and decrease throttle all right, the next thing on the list is brakes. There's only two that we need to worry about, and that's brakes and toggle parking brakes. As you can see, there's a, a left and a right. So you can brake with one wheel, either the, re the right or the left, but we're not going to worry about that. Just toggle parking brakes and brakes. Brakes is what you use when you start to land or while you're taxiing. Toggle parking brake is when you park, you set the parking brake so it doesn't roll anywhere. Now we're gonna set it to essentials, so we have that, and come over to controller. And here we see that the brakes are Y, and toggle parking brakes is Y plus B. So let's put this to use and see how it goes. All right, here we are. I'm gonna look down here at the brakes. We actually have uh, the reversers on. Let me, there we go. So this is actually the parking brake right here. Usually it's on as soon as you come in. So I'm gonna click the control numpad delete and you'll see it go down. So there's the parking brake. And then I'll click the Y plus B, Y plus B. There you go, Y plus B. Back and forth. And if you have the parking brake on and you try to put the throttle in, you can see you're not going to go anywhere. So, but if I hit Y plus B or control numpad delete, we start moving. And so the next button is brake and that's just numpad delete. I'll hit that now. And we're slowing down. It does take a minute. And there we are, and I'll hurry and do it with the controller as well. And the brakes is just Y in this case. So holding Y. And we stop. So that is the brakes. Uh, y or numpad delete, parking brake, control numpad delete, or Y plus B. All right, the next one is yaw, and yaw is for steering on the ground. So on the keyboard, as you can see, we're on keyboard, essentials, numpad zero, or the enter button. So numpad zero does left, enter button does right, 
come over to controls or controller and look at yaw and we have left trigger and right trigger so let's go ahead and put that into action here we are back in the cockpit and I'm actually going to adjust my view come down here you can click here to get rid of it and these are actually the rudder pedals so numpad zero uh, that pushes that forward that's gonna make us turn left and the enter button that's gonna make us turn right and let's do it with the controller left trigger right trigger and as you can see for this you can do like partial or fully extended with the trigger and I'm gonna go ahead and look on the outside so you can see this is what it does it moves the rudder back and forth and we only do this when we are taxiing on the ground there's other things that you can use it for but we're not gonna talk about it so here we go we'll get started we have to take off the parking brake what we learned earlier and here we go now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the numpad zero button as you can see we're turning left enter button we're going right I'm gonna use the controller left trigger right trigger and you actually don't want to go too fast taxiing you should do very slow unless you're going to take off then you do full power and try to stay on the center line One thing I should have talked about before takeoff is actually roll and pitch. Roll makes you go left and right, as you can see here, and you need to type in aileron right or aileron left in the keyboard section to do that. Or for the elevator, which is going up or going down, pitching up or pitching down, it is 8 and 2, and those are numpad numbers. Num8, num2, left is num4, right is num6. And for the controller, it's actually much, much easier. I'm going to go to Essentials, Flight Controls and Surfaces, Primary. And here we are on the aileron. And as you can see, it's set for the left. So it's actually the left stick, just moving it left and right. We'll do that. And then for the elevator, moving it uh, forward and back will push you up and push you down. So we'll go ahead and put that to use. I will say, keyboard it is a nightmare to fly with the numpad buttons I do suggest like I said at the very beginning to get a controller or some sort of stick let's go ahead and do it all right here we are I'm gonna use numpad 4 as you can see we're starting to turn numpad 6 and you just want to tap it very very lightly as you can see I am kind of already getting out of control with the numpad numbers. Okay, and now I'm going to show you with the stick, it is much easier to control. Going left, going right, up, down. Very easy to control. I can even do a barrel roll. With a uh, keyboard, there's no way that I'd be able to pull that off. And the final thing we need to worry about on the ground is decrease and increase flaps. As you can see here, F6 is decrease, F7 is increase. On the controller, left bumper is decrease, right bumper is increase. Let's go ahead and put that to the test. And we're going to do that from the outside here. That way we can see kind of what flaps do. It adjusts the wing. So here we are, F7, it's coming down, and as you can see, there's a uh, portion for flaps on the uh, HUD. And that was with F7, I'm going to do F6, bring it all the way back up, and then right bumper, left bumper, and those are flaps. Flaps help you float a little bit better and uh, they also slow you down so for a takeoff you want to have them about half we'll go ahead and put it to 15 percent for takeoff and then for landing it's going to be full so 
Now that's everything that we need to worry about on the ground. So let's go ahead and take off. We're gonna do the same as before. Control delete to get rid of the parking brake. And now putting the throttle all the way forward and using the rudder to stay centered or the yaw. And once we start to see some color over here, we can start pulling back right about here. Oh, hold on boys and girls. So I think in this case, one uh, layer of flaps is good enough. I think possibly that's why we're having such issues. And then you take them all the way off, you will drop a little bit, but you'll begin to go faster. Now we're gonna pause right here and I'm just gonna roll right into the gear, the landing gear. So this one does have landing gear. We'll pull this up to controls and come over to landing. Landing gear, it is the left stick, so you press the left stick in. And for the keyboard, landing gear is going to be G, nice and easy. So I'm just going to do this once, no landing gear is G or the left stick pressing it in. I'll get a good view as we go. There's the landing gear. I'm hitting G for the left stick. And landing gear is up. The absolute last thing that you need to know for the basics is trim. And you could get away without using trim, but it would be very annoying. Trim allows you to let go of the stick and the airplane will cruise along uh, without having to do so much input. So here we are, I typed in trim, started it out, clicked essentials, and as you can see we have elevator trim down, elevator trim up. Now there are other types of trim, you want to do the elevator or the nose up or nose down. Here we have it set for num7 or num1. That is the trim num7 will make the nose point down, num1 will make the nose the nose point up. And here we are on controller. As you can see, the Y plus D pad up and Y plus D pad down. Those are the elevators. Now I'm going to just go ahead and use the controller through this one. Uh, and as I do so, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my camera so that you can see eventually I can let go of the controller here and it will continue forward. So let's go back, resume, and here we are. I'm going to level out, and I actually have to point the nose down manually for it to stay level. So if I hit Y plus the D-pad down, eventually I'll get to a point where I can more or less let go and you have to adjust up and then down and while you're doing this you are still using the stick until at some point you can let go and it'll continue doing what it's doing in this case we're climbing if you wanted to level out we'd have to probably slow down a bit and you could level out and do the same thing with the trim so that you're level and you don't have to touch anything.